Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. The Shining is a 1980 psychological horror film that was produced and directed by the famous Stanley Kubrick and was also co-written with help from the novelist Diane Johnson. The film is based on Stephen King's 1977 novel that bears the same name. It stars Jack Nicholson, Shelley Duvall, Scatman Carruthers, and Danny Lloyd. The film's central character is Jack Torrance, played by Jack Nicholson. He's an aspiring writer and a recovering alcoholic who accepts a position as an off-season caretaker of the isolated, historic Overlook Hotel in the Colorado Rockies. All this with the assistance of his wife, Wendy Torrance, played by Shelley Duvall, and their young son, Danny, played by Danny Lloyd. Danny is gifted with psychic abilities that are called shining. After a winter storm leaves the family snowbound, Jack's sanity deteriorates due to the influence of the supernatural forces that inhabit this hotel. The production took place almost exclusively at EMI Elstree Studios, with the sets based on real locations. Kubrick worked at the time with a very small crew, which allowed him to do many takes, sometimes to the exhaustion of the actors and the staff. The invention and the introduction of the Steadicam was used in a lot of scenes in the film, giving the movie an innovative and immersive look and feel. There's been a lot of speculation about the hidden meanings and actions because of inconsistencies, ambiguities, symbolism, and the differences from the book. Stephen King was completely disappointed with the director's adaptation of his novel. Although he admired Kubrick, he had really great expectations for the project, but he was deeply disappointed in the end with the result he saw on the big screen. One of the main things that he disliked about the film was the casting of Jack Nicholson in the lead role. Although he liked Nicholson as an actor and thought he was good at what he did, he thought that he was cast wrong for that part. Nicholson was so closely aligned with his famous film One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest that King felt like the audience would automatically identify him as loony from the very first scene of the movie. But the book is about the character's gradual descent into madness. He felt if the guy looked nuts from the beginning, then the entire tragedy of the film and his downfall is completely wasted. The famous director wasn't even around for any of the location shooting in the movie. Kubrick hated to fly, and he refused to leave England toward the end of his life, so he wasn't in attendance at all when the opening credits of The Shining were shot. A second unit crew headed to Glacier National Park in Montana, where they filmed it from a helicopter. In the book, the spooky events that happen are set in room 217, not room 237. Oregon's Timberline Lodge, which was used as the hotel's exteriors, is to blame for this swap. The lodge's management asked that the room number be changed so that the guest wouldn't avoid this room, room 217. There is no room 237 in the hotel, so that number was chosen. Curiously and somewhat ironically, room 217 is requested more often than any other room at the lodge. For the scene in which Jack breaks down the bathroom door 
the props department built a door that could easily be broken. However, Jack Nicholson had worked as a volunteer fireman, and he tore it down way too easy. The props department had to go back to the drawing board and reinforce the door to get the shot that the director wanted. Nicholson and Shelley Duvall have expressed open resentment against the reception of this film, feeling that the critics and the audiences credited Kubrick solely for the film's success without considering the efforts of the actor's crew or the strength of Stephen King's underlying material. Nicholson and Duvall have said that the film was one of the hardest that they ever had to make in their career. The director Kubrick mistreated Shelley Duvall terribly while she was on the set, and it manifested itself in one of the film's most iconic scenes, the baseball bat confrontation on the stairs. Kubrick made Duvall and Nicholson shoot the scene in a record setting, 127 takes. The result of these constant takes were that Duvall's hands were shredded raw from gripping the bat for such a prolonged period of time, and her voice was completely hoarse from all the crying that she was doing. Her eyes became swollen, and she left the set completely dehydrated and worn out mentally and physically. The moments that we see on screen of Duval crying in pain, fear, and exhaustion were not acting at all, but an actor delivering lines while enduring real trauma. The director did everything he could to torture the young actress. He kept her isolated, and she was forced to wait for extensive periods of time before she performed her scenes. All this done just to throw her off kilter. He even told the crew to ignore any needs that she came up with, to completely disregard them. He was trying to break her will so that it would be visible on screen. This role is what most people know Shelley Duvall from, but what they don't know is the torture that this young actress went through to achieve it, something that some people say she never recovered from. Take a look back at this fascinating film from Stanley Kubrick. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.